Kena Baddis of the Midwest Muscle. I'm here with Joe Miller. We have been going with Superset Circuit Training. And we're at her home gym, the Metroflex in Dallas. And they have been such good, I mean, hosts. I, I can't even explain it. They let us in. We're going strong. Got the great music going. I'm just having a ball down here. And Jody, this is your home, so this is something that you're used to. I mean, how does it feel to have that kind of support? Um, well, I came to this gym back in December 2010. Um, it was, uh, I, I was needing a transition to change in my life. Um, somebody that I had uh, competed with and had known for years, um, his name's Joe, he had convinced, he kept telling me, come on out to Metroflex, come on out to Metroflex. So I started coming out. Mm -hmm. And what started off as just, you know, once every couple of weeks, came in, became once a week, and then eventually, now, I, every day, I come this whole year, the prep, my prep has been solely at Metroflex, and I feel like I've gotten my biggest gains here. Um, I've, I'm actually matching my uh, PRs uh, in, in my powerlifting lifts, um, and the support. I always know I can come in here and get a spot. It's not a meat market. It's 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 a gym. Everybody in here is like family. Mm -hmm. um, we're really there and for that's each other. Yeah. That's really important, especially when you're focused on doing the work. And not being harassed because it, it, it does take its toll. It does. You know, you can't focus, and uh, you're focus, if you're focusing on the work, then you're focused on the it. So I know that's really important. And, and a lot of people, you know, when you go to the bigger gyms or, or gyms that are, are like uh, mass marketed, it's more, it is more like a meat market. You do get harassed, and, and if you don't want to talk, then you can sit, at, you know, the jerk of the gym or, you know, however they want to say it. But you talked on the uh, power that they and you had a certain look. And now you have a different look for bodybuilding and fatigue. I mean, I'm still like new to this. How does that, uh, how, how do you know what to look for when, when you're going into a show? Is that, is that like set in stone? Um, in, in terms of looking for my physique? Mm -hmm. um, as far as a judge at a show? Um, it, it can be tough because I think that um, what judges are looking for, unfortunately, in such a subjective sport, is a constantly moving pendulum. It's just it just is almost like when the wind blows there's a new new criteria of what they're wanting and and it's really tough on the competitors um, I think you know from last year to this year um, just even for me it seemed to have changed I, I, I made the improvements I thought that I needed to make mm -hmm. I was told to come exactly the way I was that I didn't need to do anything else and it turned out that I was too small actually really? and so those are those are some things that I might have, if I really knew up front from the judges where they actually saw me, then I might have been able to uh, tailor my training or actually tailor my mental focus mm -hmm. um, because, um, you know, you keep thinking one way in your preparation and your mentality goes in that direction and it, it puts a, a certain amount of stress and a certain amount of um, mental power trying to attain a particular look and then it turns out well no they were going for something else well honestly i would think it'd be kind of devastating where you're going in with a package you think they're supposed to win this is what is you know considered the, the, the look for that category and then you, you find out oh it's totally different right as you're stepping on stage and you don't win i mean you know you figure i brought the package that was supposed to be brought and yet it's not the package that was supposed to be brought. That's kind of a, I, I wouldn't say a slap in the face, but it, it's got to be kind of devastating. It it was it was a little confusing, um, and it was um, it, it, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, I've got to roll with the punches in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but it was definitely a little shocking. It was, it, and it wasn't just shocking to me. It was shocking a, a lot of people would come up to me and, and said that they were pretty shocked. And, yeah. Um, the, the results and, and what had happened and um, and don't get me wrong I'm very grateful and thankful to have earned my winnings in, in the physique uh, category um, but in terms of bodybuilding I came from the reigning Miss Natural Olympia mm -hmm. told that this is what we want for natural female bodybuilding mm -hmm. uh, to hear from other women at the show who said to me I actually decided to do female bodybuilding because I saw you compete, mm -hmm. and I said, oh, that's what female bodybuilding can look like? 
like I didn't realize that. If that's what it looks like, I'm all in. Yeah. And then it changes. And and, and people aren't gonna say it openly, but behind closed doors, people are like, well, I don't know if I wanna, I don't know if I wanna go in that direction now. Because natural natural female bodybuilding, to me, natural bodybuilding is not supposed to be about size. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things that I felt a relief in when I made the decision to get out of the non-drug tested organization and to move into a drug tested organization was now I can quit worrying about just growing and growing and growing at any expense, yeah. including injury to myself. And health, yeah. I, I can focus on the part that I actually have a lot of control over, which is the conditioning. Exactly. And because the conditioning, when my conditioning is spot on, my symmetry is spot on. Mm -hmm. And to me, natural bodybuilding is meant to be about conditioning and symmetry first. To me, conditioning trumps size when drugs are taken out of the equation. Exactly. And I think it's a very dangerous uh, step to choose uh, when symmetry is there to mm -hmm. choose size over condition. Yeah, because you set the wrong precedent. Yeah. You you push people to say, well, I don't know how to get that big without genetics, so I'm going to start taking something. Yeah. That is, it, it's a size factor. People don't say, oh, I want to be shredded, so I'm going to take steroids. They say, I want to get bigger, so I'm going to take steroids. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very dangerous, especially for women, for us to go in that realm. And it's what I, I personally don't agree with it. And so if they want to call my physique a physique physique, okay, I consider that kind of lightweight bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I'm not going to change my look to meet somebody else's standards. Yeah. It, it's got to be what you can, your best presentation and you. And, and I get that. And, and talking on winning, you know, Kyoshi got the car, and I'm thinking, wow, that's, that's awesome. But what did they give the women? Well, the, the winner of the female bodybuilding, she did get $1,000. Mm -hmm. The winner of the figure, she got uh, $1,000. Uh, the winner of the physique, which was me, I got a tube bag. Whoa. And I got a bottle of champagne. Down champagne. But it was a nice gesture. <laughs> I was hoping for a hubcap. <laughs> Steering wheel cover? Okay. okay, you know, I, I do this because I wanted I I didn't do it and go, oh, I'm going to win money. Mm -hmm. But as a pro, it is one of the perks to be able to kind of pay yourself back for all the expenses. Mm -hmm. um, and I did three shows this year, and I did get a registration fee taken care of. I got uh, my hotel taken care of. And I did get the gym bag while she came. But that was out of three shows. And I had winnings in all three shows. Now, what, I, what is the issue here is that the numbers were very small. Mm -hmm. So I feel that I'm getting almost... Uh, I don't want to say, I, I'm dealing with the repercussions of other women choosing not to compete in this particular organization or this particular division. And so I'm paying for their choices. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting paid for their choices. Well, yeah, so that's a better term, yeah. But instead of it being the other way around, and um, I've tried to, to kind of push the, the idea of, but if I do earn, get a good earning, then I'm I can talk about that instead of what I'm talking about now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and really go, yeah, I mean, there weren't that many numbers, but look at what I got. And maybe if more women are in, then we can get even more. But look at where the starting point is, and it's a really great starting point. And that, and, and I don't have that to step on. No. I, don't, I don't have that platform, unfortunately. Well, that's something that I'd like to talk to you about next time, because I, I don't want you to lose your problem, but I, that's a very good point about the stigma of female bodybuilding in the natural realm. So we'll talk about that after we get a little bit more work in. So stay tuned, because I, I, I think she's on to something. So for Kaylin Patterson and Jody Miller, we're not done yet. We 